Welcome to Self Help 101. Today we will discuss breast cancer. Today we're going to be talking about breast cancer. So we're going to call it Breast Cancer 101 and I have my bifocals on because I cannot see and I will screw up the introductions if I don't. So I just want to say thank you so much to all four of you for agreeing to give up a Sunday and spend it with me. Thank you. Thank you. With me today, I have Dr. Veronica Jones, Assistant Clinical Professor, Division of Surgical Oncology, Department of Surgery, City of Hope. Before arriving at City of Hope, you were an Assistant Professor, Department of Surgery at Emory, correct? Yes. Am I forgetting anything? No. Okay. <laughs> Next to me, I have Dr. Joan Mortimer, Baum Family Professor in Women's Cancers, Vice Chair and Professor, Department of Medical Oncology and Therapeutic Research, Director of Women's Cancer Programs, Co-Director of the Breast Cancer Program at City of Hope. Am I forgetting anything? No, it's plenty good. Okay. <laughs> Dr. Arthi Haria, new title, Vice Provost at City of Hope. Director Cancer and Aging Research Program, Co-Leader Cancer Control and Population Sciences, Professor Department of Medical Oncology and Therapeutic Research and Department of Population Science. Am I forgetting? Okay. And Dr. Laura Cooper, Director of Women's, the Women's Center mm -hmm. at City of Hope, Chief of Breast Surgery mm -hmm. at City of Hope, Co-Director of the Breast Program with Dr. Mortimer, an Associate Professor, Department of Surgery, City of Hope. Yes. So I'm going to jump right in. Is heart disease or breast cancer the number one health issue affecting women in the U.S. today? What would you say? It's heart disease. It's heart disease? Heart disease, yeah. Okay. Most women who are diagnosed with early breast cancer don't die of breast cancer. And their biggest cause of death is still heart disease. Interesting. Yeah. And why? Is it diet? Is it lack of exercise? Is, is it heredity? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, I think I don't know. I don't know what it's due to. I don't know, Arthur, if you have any brilliant insights into that. Well, but heart, yeah. Heart disease is, is a, you know, it is a uh, a big thing that impacts uh, older women in particular, and mm -hmm. it's something that you know. It's interesting as we are. With patients in the room, we're talking about breast cancer. They often um, are so concerned about the breast cancer, which actually might not be the ultimate thing that's going to uh, limit their life expectancy. And so, for us as as breast cancer doctors, it's a very teachable moment to mm -hmm. say we're going to talk about the breast cancer, but we've got this opportunity to talk about all of these other things, like your high blood pressure and your cholesterol and your diet. Um, that sometimes has not been really addressed. Breast cancer might be the ticket into the door for us to be able to talk about these other things. Well, I, I'm just gonna add to that. That's why survivorship is so important. So there have been studies that have shown that if women live beyond the first couple of years of breast cancer so they don't die of their breast cancer, um, they, uh, their life expectancy is actually long, uh, longer than other women of their age group in the United States. And that's not because women who have cancer are seen every year by a doctor getting their mammograms. It's an opportunity for them to say, well, you know, I, my, I've been getting a little short of breath when I walk upstairs, so then they can get plugged in and see a, a cardiologist. So that's why survivorship is so important. And this, the state of the knowledge is that, you know, when women have breast cancer, it's more important that you not gain weight and that you exercise, and so those are, you know, common um, health benefits to heart disease as well. So like we've all said, it, it is an opportunity to actually healthy lifestyle impacts a lot of different diseases and it's a real opportunity in the wake of having a breast cancer diagnosis of cleaning up your act. Mm -hmm. That's yeah so it's almost like a second chance yeah. in some ways. Yeah. So. Yeah. so I'd like to um, I'd like to have you explain a cancer cell breast cancer cell versus a colon cancer cell. A lot of people say to me that you know is it the same you know, just happen to be in my breast, or is it different? Is it a diff? Can you talk about that? <laughs> you haven't talked. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> how to how 
to answer that. Um, it's not the same. It's not the same type of cell, but it is the same in that it's a normal cell that has now changed. The gene, the genetic makeup of the cell has mm -hmm. changed so that it um, can now grow quickly. It can divide. It can invade other tissue. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's not the exact same type of cell as in another part of the body because it still comes from the breast, but it has undergone some type of transformation that now makes it a problem. Okay. And then can you talk about the stages, stage one, two, three, and four of breast cancer? I'll start with, I'll do stage one. And then everyone else can do something else. So stage one breast cancer means the tumor is less than one, uh, two centimeters in size. It's in the breast and only in the breast. So what's interesting about breast cancer as opposed to something like colon cancer is that women actually have choices on how they want to address this breast cancer. They have surgical choices. And what would that be? Well, you can either have a lumpectomy or you can have a mastectomy, which is removal of the entire breast. Um, we, so Veronica and I work with the plastic surgeons quite frequently. Uh, a lot of women will choose a mastectomy so that they can reduce their chance of a future breast cancer or they can avoid radiation. And so we do a lot of what's called nipple spraying mastectomies. So we preserve the whole envelope of the breast and then our plastic surgeons work at the same time and put an implant. That's one option. Okay. Who's going to yeah. talk about stage two? So I can talk about stage two. <laughs> Okay. Um, stage two is a little bit larger of a size of cancer in the breast. It's under five centimeters. And, or it's a smaller breast cancer with involvement of the glands underneath the arms or the lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. And you still have options, um, usually with a stage two cancer in terms of what type of surgery um, you have. With the smaller ones, you still can do a lumpectomy. And um, the larger ones, you start to think of uh, removing the whole breast. Wonderful. Who wants to take stage three? Stage three breast cancer it now has become more locally advanced. So it's often more obvious at the time of presentation. It can be in impacting the skin or reaching towards the chest wall. So it's a more aggressive form of the breast cancer, or a larger form, and it often requires some sort of treatment before um, the before surgery can be performed because it's too hard for the surgeon at that point to be able to remove it. So treatment, or chemo, radiation before surgery or? Typically it involves chemotherapy and if someone is not able to undergo chemotherapy then we can think about other treatments like endocrine therapy but it typically involves chemotherapy and then sometimes things like if depending on the type of tumor we think about drugs like Receptin or pertuzumab. So those are other potential medications that are utilized. And what's the time frame? I mean, how long before you're able to perform surgery if somebody has stage three and it presents like that? Yeah, so it typically depends upon um, the regimen that's being given, but it's within three to six months that the patient's able to go on to surgery. Um, rarely, someone will not be responding and we will go sooner, but typically that's about the, the type of regimen that we're, we're giving. Okay. And then stage. So stage four is disease that has spread outside the breast and the regional lymph nodes that drain it under the arm and, uh, and in the um, upper neck area. Uh, and stage four disease can be tumor in the liver, the lungs, the bones, the brain. Uh, and stage four disease is generally not curable, but we have made great advances in terms of how we treat advanced breast cancer, metastatic breast cancer, um, with many, many new drugs. So treatment is defined by whether the cancer is estrogen fed, if it's not estrogen fed, whether the cancer has this HER2 protein that Dr. Hurry had talked about, Herceptin and Pertuzumab. So we have, uh, although this is not a curable disease, we can keep people in, an, in remission for many, many years, even when they have advanced stage four breast cancer. Can you talk about breast cancer in premenopausal women 
and then in postmenopausal women. I'm a look, you'd be the postmenopausal person under this obvious okay. circumstances. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so breast cancer really does have a dis different sort of natural course in young women and in in older women. So, and I'm going to define young women as women who are under the the age of 39, so between 18 and 39. Young women who get breast cancer tend to have a slightly more aggressive type of breast cancer than older women. It tends to be less responsive to hormonal treatments, and unfortunately it also is more likely to be diagnosed as advanced disease, so metastatic disease. Um, but Despite that, I mean, we, the, the treatment is tailored according to whether you're before and after menopause and what your hormones, whether there's a hormone dependent or a hormone resistant breast cancer. Um, and one of the problems that we have when we're seeing premenopausal women is that a lot of times they are uh, not believed to have breast cancer since the average the median age of breast cancer is like 63 in this country. So how could a 25 year old woman have breast cancer and so maybe that's part of the reason why they're diagnosed later on but that that probably isn't the reason it really is that they have a more aggressive biology and so we tend to treat them more aggressively with a lot more chemotherapy more intensive chemotherapy and postmenopausal breast cancer it essentially just means that it was diagnosed when a woman had after a woman has undergone uh, menopause and as Dr. Mortimer had said, the vast majority of breast cancers actually are breast cancers associated with aging. So as we age, our risk of breast cancer increases. And the average age of breast cancer is a woman who's in their early 60s. Now, the, the, the biology of the cancer does change as, as an individual ages. It is thought to be less aggressive overall. Mm -hmm. with an older compared to younger woman. But that being said, the treatment still really has to be tailored to the biology, despite the age of the patient. So still there can be aggressive breast cancers in older women, um, and, and the medical oncologist and the treatment team is very attuned to that, that we have to understand the biology of the tumor and that determines the treatment. Wonderful, thank you for... Um, has the number of, of women diagnosed with breast cancer increased in the last, I don't know, 25 years, 15 years, would you say, or no? I know we talk about the aging population, but then you also mentioned the under 39 yeah. age group. So are, are you seeing uh, an increase in premenopausal, postmenopausal? Is, is it because due to early detection that it's better? I, you know, I just want to get a... Well, no, it's, it's interesting. I mean, granted, we work at a cancer center, so we see a lot of young women. So sometimes I think it's really increasing among young, young women. But if you keep looking at the large databases in the United States, which tracks cancer, so SEER is the, the largest database, um, it has not shown an increase in the younger age group, although it sometimes feels that way. Um, the incidence of breast cancer has remained fairly steady. So it's about one in eight women develop breast cancer. Uh, there was an increase in breast cancer in the, I guess, late 1990s to early 2000s when a lot of women were on hormonal replacement therapy and that was increasing breast mm -hmm. cancer. When that was uh, discovered that that was a link or a cause and a lot of women were taken off uh, HRT or hormonal replacement therapy, the incidence of the estrogen positive breast cancers started to decline. But I think it's pretty steady, about one in eight. And what was it, would you say, in the 70s? or the 60s? It was still like one in eight, or would it be like one in 10, or? Oh, I was like one in 12, about in the 60s, I think. Yeah. I don't think I have to, I have to well, track my track. And, and <laughs> what's interesting, I would think about that. So that, you're, I think fewer women would be diagnosed properly, yeah. to be completely yeah. honest. I think what would happen is women, a lot of women didn't present. Um, I think you know, breast cancer didn't really come to the forefront. First of all, <clears throat> we didn't have screening mammography until the mid 1980s. Um, <clears throat> so women before that just presented when they usually felt something. Mm -hmm. And I think probably before that time women, you know, it wasn't something that was very well known. People kept, were secret about it. Um, so I think people died and I don't think how many we could properly attribute it to breast cancer. So, so it, but would you say it's important to not only uh, get a mammogram but also to self-exam as well? I mean, I... I mean, thank God it wasn't cancer, it was a sclerotic adenoma, but it was, I had a mammogram and it was fine, it was clear, and then I was working 
on a med surg floor and in the shower one day I felt a lump and then um, it the, the, I went to the surgeon said it was nothing whatever and then it got a little bit bigger and then it was uh, pressing on a nerve which was painful and when I was working it was a and I, I went to him and I just said I I'd like to have it taken out I just hate that it's here and mm -hmm. I don't know what yeah. it is yeah. but you know it wasn't detected and when they took it out it was like about this big but, but so but I, I do check. I mean, I'm, I'm always checking, and I, and I just wonder. It's like a lot of people get lazy about it because they think, oh, I'm just going to, for my mammogram, my yearly mammogram, and I'm, I'm not going to worry about it the rest of the year. Right, exactly. So it's a really important point for women out, you know, or all of our women colleagues is that self-exam is very important. Bringing, you know, identifying something yourself and bringing it to your clinician's attention is, is really important and that our screening tests have limitations. So mm -hmm. just because something's not seen on a mammogram, if you have a lump, it still should be evaluated. So I think that's a really important. Yeah, most element. breast cancer is still found as a lump by the patient. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Is that true, really? Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. True. And I think it is important to just have a relationship with a doctor because your level of screening may not be the same as an average woman's risk. You may have a higher risk of developing breast cancer, and so your your screening may look not look like everybody else's. Uh -huh. And I think that's really mm -hmm. important too. You may need closer follow up, mm -hmm. um, so just to be aware of that. Yeah. And in terms of incidence, so the number of Breast cancer incidence is increasing right now within the U.S. because of the aging of the population, again, as you were saying. So what we're going to see is a rise in the number of cases of breast cancer and really all cancers over this decade and the next decade because the baby boomers are aging and most mm -hmm. cancers are diseases associated with aging. So, and, and then on top of that, we're talking about it more. So mm -hmm. women are talking to women more, so we feel like we hear about it a lot more. And, and uh, I think that's also very good that we're sharing with each other what we're going through. And um, it helps others, I think, to mm -hmm. be able to also seek attention. Yeah, so it's not hidden. Not hidden. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask about um, breast cancer in men. You know, Steve's beloved uncle, Lenny, passed away from breast cancer. And we don't really talk about that. Or at least when people talk about breast cancer, they always just think of women and they don't think that there are men that are um, going through that. What is the percentage of men that are diagnosed with breast cancer? And is that linked to genetics? most of the time? I mean, I'm just curious. I don't really know what the statistics are. I, I think it's 2%. Yeah, I think it's, yeah, it's one, one to 2%. Yeah. It's one to two. And quite honestly, I think it's about half. So about 50% of them, I think, have a genetic mutation. Or at least that would be my, my population. But yeah, <laughs> I think what happens is when um, men tend to feel something, uh, they do not think it's breast cancer. Uh, some men, I think, don't want to uh, think about it. And so are a little hesitant to go seek out care from a doctor. Um, so that's why sometimes male breast cancer is detected a little bit later. And I've actually had a patient who saw a dermatologist and they thought it was an abscess and they, you know, opened it up to, and when there, it was solid then realized it was, you know, probably breast cancer. And what was unfortunate is I think, you know, now we're much more aware of genetics and genetic um, mutations. But his mother had uh, died of breast cancer. He had a whole family of breast cancer, and wow. but we don't, tend, you know, know what, you know, up until recently, people weren't thinking about the men who were affected. So, so when you said twelve percent before, no, are you twelve percent? I mean, women. Yeah, women would, was, but so where would, um, so men aren't included in that? No, men aren't included. So in that, okay, yeah. right. I mean, the usual right. numbers like one in two hundred breast cases mm -hmm. are men. Okay. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, so although the incidence okay, um, of endometrial cancer is um, slightly higher in African American women, the mortality is higher in African American women. And I bring this up because I want to know if there is a disparity in 
breast cancer with? There definitely is, and so um, we, we can both talk about this, but um, it turns out, so for many years we've been saying that African American women had a less, less the incidence was lower of breast cancer, but they had a much higher mortality. That actually only just recently changed in about 2012, so now um, it, the incidence is equal, and it's thought to be due to increasing the screening programs. But what is a, m most unfortunate is that the um, curves are splitting even wider for the mortality rates. So the mortality rates for African Americans are still um, much higher than they are for um, other ethnicities and races, and it's thought to be due to the bi biology mostly. Um, a lot of African Americans have a much higher incidence of triple negative breast cancer um, and harder to treat. Yeah, it's, it's right, the biology is more aggressive. In African American, so even when you control for other factors, um, socioeconomic factors mm -hmm. or um, access to care, still mm -hmm. the mortality is higher in African American women. So. And can you explain triple negative breast cancer? Who wants to take that? Sure. So um, when someone's diagnosed with breast cancer, um, as Dr. Hurry was saying, we look at the biology of the disease. And I think Dr. Mortimer mentioned earlier that we want to see if it responds to estrogen, if it uh, responds to progesterone, or if it has this protein called HER2. A triple negative breast cancer doesn't have any of those factors. So it doesn't really have a target that we can go after with a treatment. Yeah. Um, we still give treatment, of course, mm -hmm. but we don't have something in particular that we can go after to, to treat the breast cancer. Mm -hmm. Please join me for future episodes of Self-Help 101. Learn how to help yourself and help those that you love.